ครับสมบัติทอล์กจุดสิ่งที่เกิดสลับไอ้นี่คือโจนมาทำรูมในเซิร์คัสเวิร์กช็อปเย็บโอเคเพอร์เฟกต์เย็บฮัลโหลทุกคนนี่คือโจนสวัสดีกลับมาขอบคุณที่เราเจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันในช่วงนี้ขอบคุณที่เราได้เจอกันใน We're making these ones out of flour and balloons, and this type out of rice and tights. Jake's now going to show you a type of juggling ball known as thuds. So if you like uh, juggling and you get far with your skills as you practice, you might want to explore some different types of equipment. So thuds feel very similar to the rice and tights. They're quite squashy. They're called thuds because that's the noise they make as they land in your hand. And if you drop them on the floor because they're squashy, they won't roll away. We're now going to move to stage balls. What I should say to give you an idea is the suds cost probably three or four pounds a ball. These are stage balls. They're bright, they're colourful, they're easy to be seen on stage in a performance. They're quite heavy. You might have heard the sound when they dropped. Um, and also, because they're much firmer, they do tend to roll away and need chasing if you drop them. And they're probably about eight pounds a ball, just to give you an idea. So thank you, Jake. Jake's going to help us with our workshop shortly, and uh, you'll see a bit more of him later. So Kira's going to come in now and show you what all about poi. So we'll start with the poi that we're making today. These are called sock poi. Surprisingly, because they're made from a pair of socks. So Kira's just going to spin those and show you what they look like. And now we'll move on to see some poi that are called contact poi. And contact poi, like the stage juggling balls, are very bright. Again, they're bright so that you can see them on stage. Your audience gets a clear view of what you're doing. They're also heavy, like the stage balls. Which means you can also do manipulation and other kinds of body tricks with them as well. And those type of poi, I should have said, um, sock poi. Obviously, you can make at home for free. This is what a shop bought pair of sock poi would look like, and will cost you about six pounds. The contact poi are quite expensive because their performance equipment they cost around twenty five pounds a pair. These poi here. Are called glow poi. They're brilliant at night. They glow in the dark. They do brilliant nighttime performances. This type of poi would start at about fifteen pounds a pair. These are our uh, professional pair. They're about one hundred and fifty pounds a pair. So lots of variation in price and um, and the different types of functions that poi do. If you want to see our expensive ones in action, please tune back in tonight at nine o'clock, where the whole family. Is providing you with a half-hour circus performance to end your evening. Our last type of poi that Kira has here are called flag poi, and we made these at home. So if you're good at sewing, they're really simple to make. They cost us about five pounds. They make a beautiful noise when you spin them, and because you can pick your own fabric, you can be as funky and as wacky as you like with them. And they're simply made from satin fabric, curtain weight, and fisherman swivel. So they're really simple to make. So thank you, Kira, for that demonstration. I'm going to call Jake back in now, and we're going to get on with our juggling ball and poi making workshop. So as we talked about before, we're going to make. Um, juggling balls from balloons filled with flour, or if I reach over here, tights, regular ladies' tights filled with rice. So during this workshop to to help us um, fill our juggling balls, I'm going to use a, a funnel out the kitchen. But I appreciate not everyone's going to have a funnel, so I thought I would teach you how to make a cone first to help with the filling. 
Um, and the great thing about these cones is that um, the cone I'm going to show you how to make, if you're a baker and you love icing, these cones make perfect icing bags as well. So do um, learn how to use these. They have multiple uses and be really handy. So we're going to take a regular piece of paper. Uh, I've got Jake here who's going to make along with me so that I go at a nice speed for you and I don't go too fast. So we're going to fold our paper like we were making origami, where you would normally go to the, make a triangle with the um, edge of your paper, but we're going to go a little bit further. So you end up with this nice V at the top. So it doesn't have to be exact, but as close as you can, and then make a nice big crease in your paper. So when you open it out, you should see a line across your paper like this, and we're going to cut along the line. Uh, and once we've cut along the line, then we have our shape for our piping bag or our cone. So you'll see that we've ended up with a triangle. We've got a really long side with a point and a flat end. And we're going to make the, 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 ed, the small end of our cone in the middle of our long edge. So we're going to put our hands flat and between our thumb and our first finger, we're going to take the pointy bit of the triangle along the long edge. And then we're going to roll our hands over. It won't go exactly along the line. It'll go at an angle. Ooh. We'll try again, roll our hands and then we're going to pull with the flat end. And you can see it can be a little bit tricky. Pull with the flat end and keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling till you get a nice point. And that will give you a cone. Uh, as long as you don't let go. Which is what I've managed to do. There we go. So once you've got your cone, you might want to take a piece of sellotape to, uh, to fix it. Uh, I just can't see where I put my sellotape right this minute. If you haven't got sellotape to hand, what you can do is just put a little tear at the top of the cone, like so, and fold it in. So you would get a little tab like this that would help you keep your cone shut. And then at the bottom, you've got your hole, which you can make larger by snipping. And that would allow you then to fill your um, balloon or your tight with your flour and rice. So we'll move on to how we're going to make our, our juggling balls with balloons and flour first. So we're going to take a balloon. We're going to take a bowl to measure some flour. And we're going to measure, and it doesn't have to be exact, between probably 80 and 120 grams of flour is what you need. So I'm going to let Jake weigh his out first. And hopefully you're all weighing along with me, with me at home. If you're going to make the rice and tights balloons, at this point you could weigh your rice out as well. It doesn't have to be exact. So anywhere between 80 and 120 grams, the more flour you use, the fuller your ball will be and the heavier it will be. But this is just to give you an idea that you've got about the right amount. There we go. So at this point, we now want to fill a bottle. Um, the best size bottle, from my experience, is a 500 milliliter water bottle. So if you have one of those to hand, that's great. This is a one litre juice bottle. Two litre pop bottles are probably a little bit big and a bit cumbersome, but it's possible. So we're going to put the funnel in the top and tip the flour in. And then we're going to shake the funnel like so. Jake, you can shake. You just wiggle it from side to side and up and down a little bit and that allows the flour to go into the bottle. And what we're going to do is use the bottle to fill our balloons. And it does take a minute to get all the flour down. 
to a good shape. There we go. That's our bottle filled. So the next thing you do when you've got your flower in your bottle is you need to inflate your balloon. It doesn't need to be really full. That's plenty, Jake. Just enough to get over the top. Now, this is the tricky bit. I'm going to suggest to Jake at this point, he holds his balloon shut and I will help him with the next step. And the next step is keeping the air in the balloon. You need to get the neck of the balloon <laughs> over the bottle. So it might take two pairs of hands. It is possible to do it just on your own and I'll show you that in a minute, just to prove it's possible. And you need to try and keep as much air in your balloon as you can. So at this point, with some air in your balloon, we're going to turn the bottle vertically upside down 180 degrees and shake all the flour to the bottom. And now I'm going to hold the bottle neck and the balloon while Jake squeezes the bottle and squeezes the flour into the balloon. Keep squeezing, Jake. There we go. So now we've got all our flour in the balloon. It's really important at this stage that you hold your balloon shut when you take it off your bottle. Your bottle is only there to fill up the balloon. So at this point, you have to let out the spare air in your balloon. I'm going to give Jake this to do. So I'm going to hold it tight while I hand over to Jake. And Jake's going to just hold it over the bowl because if you let your flower out too fast, you get a nice little fountain. And Jake did really well and he has managed to do that without any fountains of flower. So at this point, you can see Jake knows what he's doing. You're going to cut the neck off your balloon because you don't need that anymore. And that feels a really strange thing to do, to cut the neck off your balloon. Now, if any of you are having trouble at this stage, maybe you've tried to put your balloon on the top of your bottle and the balloon has split. Sometimes if your balloons are a bit cheaper, they split here. Please don't worry, we can use broken balloons in the next step. So just while we wait for you to catch up, I'm going to fill a bottle um, and fill a balloon um, so Jake and I can make alongside each other. So the first thing I need to do is just try to inflate my bottle a little bit and then we'll tip the flour in and give it a shake. I'm going to look over to Martin and see if anybody's asked us any questions or needs a shout out. No, we have no shout outs yet, but we have had a comment about how hard it is to get flour at the moment. <laughs> yes, well, I do agree, it can be quite hard to get flour. Uh, I will say we're very fortunate, we got a very large bag of flour from a supermarket that will sh stay nameless. Um, that's also why we've given you the option to make balloons from rice and tights as well, because we realise not everybody would have a supply of flour. So we're going to turn this one over again and Jake's going to give it a squeeze. So Jake has demonstrated a pitfall with making these juggling balls as he's put a little bit too much air in his balloon. So we're not getting enough pressure from the juice bottle. And you may see the flour coming out as I let some of the air out. No, oh, there's not too much flour in there, right. We're gonna try with a little bit less air in. We've also used this bottle to make quite a few of these juggling balls. And over time, as the plastic gets used, we're not quite on right, Jake. Then the pressure from the, the bottle drops a little bit and it makes it harder to fill them. But let's give it another go. Thank you, Jake. Oh, we've got, no, we've got a tear. We've got a tear. Oh, <laughs> this is when you see the pitfalls of balloon making. Ooh. So we've got a tear in our balloon, which is what's stopping it filling. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that balloon to one side 
Well, you I can keep the tear balloons though, they're useful aren't they later on? Later on they are useful if you haven't got flour in them. That one's not going to be any use because it's got flour in it. I'm just going to try and see if I can reinflate this bottle a little bit more. But it's good to show you that, um, that there are a few difficulties making these, that they don't always go straight forward the first time round. So if you are having a little bit of trouble, uh, don't worry, we're going slow on, well, we're going slow on purpose. There we go. And of course, working with flour can be a little bit messy. And Jake's done some good preparation. Hold that balloon. We have another question. Did it take yeah. you long to learn how to juggle? Oh, so that's all right, Jake. Um, so juggling can take quite a while to learn. I've been learning for three years. So before that time, oh, I don't know what's happening here. We're not having much luck with these balloons today. Let's see what we can get into this balloon. Yeah, that bottle, I think. Yeah. Yeah. This is a good example of the bottles have been overused. <laughs> so when we agreed to do this workshop, they asked us to pre-record a video and we only had the one bottle. So this bottle has been used for one workshop already, which is why it's giving us a bit of a challenge. OK, so you'll see now Jake's letting the air out. If you let it out too fast, this is what happens. So you saw there we've got a bit of a fountain. Uh, great for having fun with, definitely. We've had a, can we have a shout out to Cameron from Sunderland Explorers? Oh, hi Cameron, nice of you to be with us this afternoon. So like we did before with Jake's balloon, we're just going to cut the top off like so. And that gives you a balloon with a little bit of flour popping out. And you can see Jake put less in his balloon. So we've got balloons of different sizes and different, and and different, different weights. and uh, squidginess. And squidginess, so yes, when you come to juggle it, they will be slightly slightly differently squidgy. So what we're going to do here is just knock the top of the flower off. And this is the point in time where you can start using, I'm just going to move a few things out of the way so you can see. Um, you can start using any balloons where you may have spoilt the neck, because the next step involves cutting the neck off your balloon. So what we want to do with the juggling balls is put around four layers on top of the balloon that we've got there to make sure that all the flour stays inside. If you put three is at the absolute minimum in terms of layers that you can get away with. Um, we made a practice one with only two layers and when the top layer falls off by accident, then your flour comes out. So it's always worth putting about four balloons on. So all I've done here is I've put both hands inside the balloon. We've got quite a good hole with the neck off. You give it a good stretch and you're putting it on like an old fashioned swimming cap, covering the top of your balloon and covering that hole. And then you just have to work the balloon round. And as you see, if your hands fall out, you just have to try and find the edge. And you're pulling that balloon up as far as you can. And the less flour you have in your juggling ball, the further your cover will go. So you'll see I've got half and half the ball at the moment. Jake should manage to cover most of his if he gets a good stretch on his balloon. So what Jake's not managed to do is just pull that balloon right the way over. You need to pull it as far as you possibly can to cover as much of the balloon as you can. So you can see Jake's got much better coverage on his balloon, a little bit covered in flour, uh, but that's always a little bit of uh, fun or danger in making juggling balls. So he is using lentils. Lentils, yes, lentils are an excellent filler. Yeah, really good idea. Any kind of dry pulse um, is great to do. Lentils don't have any sharp points, so are great to go in balloons as well. We haven't put the rice in the balloons because there's always a danger of puncturing. We've had a hello from Adam at Whitney Bay Explorers as well. Oh, hi Adam, nice of you to join us from Whitney Bay Explorers. So and we've got Jane Jasper from Anderton Street, Joseph, sorry, Anderton Street, Anderton St. Joseph's Scouts and Cubs in West Lancashire. In West Lancashire, oh, so you're the furthest away so far. 
my big question is if we've got anybody from abroad watching anybody not in the uk so when you're cutting these balloons is can you cut too far um so when you cut the balloons you can probably cut too far you want to be somewhere at the bottom of the neck if you cut too far down you're just not going to get the the tension on the balloon to keep it on um so i I wouldn't go right down to the bottom and obviously you're trying to cover as much of your balloon as possible. So I'm putting my third layer on again each time I'm trying to cover the lowest bottom layer and you'll see the more we do and we can start moulding it into more of a juggling ball shape um, the better we go and different brands of balloons perform in different ways. These are quite sticky, so you'll see I've just adjusted this one and I've actually managed to loosen the layer underneath. So actually what I'm going to do here is just take that layer off and bring that one down tighter. And Jake's got a good one though, if you look at his. Yeah, Jake's is managing really well. If he can get that third layer on nice and tight, that'll, that'll turn into a really good balloon. There Juggling go. ball. There we go, this one's a little bit better. So I had slightly more flour in mine, which has made mine a little bit more um, kind of cylindrical than Jake's. It's a bit more of a potato shape. Uh, it doesn't really matter because, you know, you can use any household object for juggling. Tennis balls are good. So, and tennis balls are great as well. So, so we've had a question of how long have you been doing things like this? Oh, so a lot, a long, long time. I first got into circus skills probably around 12 years ago I went to a circus show for kids that where they had a workshop afterwards and I really enjoyed having a go on a trapeze so the first circus skill I learned was aerial circus trapezes and silks and hoops that where you fly in the air and, um, tonight. and there'll be a bit of that tonight in our family circus show because we're fortunate enough to have an aerial rig at home uh, it's not out in the wind, but fortunately we've pre-recorded our session, so uh, the weather doesn't matter so much for us. Um, since then, we've taken up lots of different disciplines. Um, both kids have been training between six and eight years each. Kira thinks nine. She's waving at me from the back corner of the conservatory. Um, and we've practiced lots of different disciplines. So you can see from all our circus equipment in the background, this is a lot of what we do, but not everything that we do. Um, we also juggle hats as well. Um, you can see up there hula hoops and mini hoops. Um, we have a roller bowler for balancing on. That's a cylinder with a plank on the top. Um, we have a unicycle, though that's something we're still practicing with. So this is my juggling ball with four layers on. Perfectly Put good to juggle with. And that's the last oh, Jake's going so, for extra safety. We've got a few more hellos. We've got yeah. uh, Ben from uh, Whitley Bear Scouts. Hi, Ben. Nice to see you. And um, we've got, if I can find the one on the list, and I've just lost it, one from a long way away. I think we just got our winner. Hello from abroad from Georgetown, Grand Cayman Islands. It's 8 a.m. there at the moment. Brilliant, so great to have you with us from the Cayman Islands, amazing. So another thing you can do, depend, I don't know if it'll work with these balloons, but we'll try it, is with your leftover um, top bit of your balloon, you can cut off uh, the very, very top of the neck. So you're just left with the cylindrical tube and you can put this on your balloon as a decoration. It is quite tricky. My balloons are particularly difficult to stretch I will have a go uh, if you have a slightly cheaper balloon which is a bit more stretchy you might find they work better but you can put them on like this you can unravel them as you can see it's just a little bit tricky and you could just leave it on as a as a thin band but if you can manage to unravel your neck a little bit then you get a nice stripe across your balloon as well. Have you heard anyone to... asking about colours? What colours should they use? That... Well, you know, this is the time to be creative. I've used different colours on each layer, so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I've just picked a random one. Jake's picked random colours. 
Um, if you want to make them look more professional, use all balloons of the same colour and then you won't see any of the joints. So I'm going to move on for those who are waiting to see what we do with rice and tights. But again, lentils or pulses or anything, beans, dried beans, chickpeas, any of those kind of things can be used. We can move our bottle out the way, um, but we're going to essentially do something similar. We're going to take a plastic bag. This is a, just a general food bag. This is a bag that came with a delivery this week. Um, I would say if you're using that kind of bag to reuse it, just watch out for safety air holes because your rice will fall out. Um, so try and use a corner of the bag that doesn't have an air hole in it. We've got a few more hellos. We've got James from Worcestershire. Hi James, nice um, to see you. We've got Sky from First Dinnington Scouts. Hi Sky. We've got Joe Mace from Celsi. Hi Joe. So we've got a few people and hopefully you're all enjoying it. So we can do the same thing. We can put our bag on the scales and weigh between 80 and 120 grams against. Oh, Jake wants a squidgy ball. He's oh, going to got a question about what time the show is tonight. Oh, the show tonight is nine o'clock. And it's nine o'clock, I think, again in the STEM tent. And we've got loads of exciting things. We've got demonstrations of aerial skills, poi, Diablo. And there's even some danger in there. And there are some special guests that maybe you wouldn't expect in a circus. So lots of things to come back and, and have a look at this evening. And we would be delighted if you could join us. So you can see here, Jake's weighing out his. Um, now he's weighed out here, it says 30 grams. It's more than that. No, I don't think it is. Maybe we need less rice. I am going to have a look at the, the rice ball I made earlier and we're going to see how heavy this one is. So this one actually is only 40 grams. So I'm going to make mine a, 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 not a squidgy one. So Jake's going to fill his up a bit more. He thinks this one's a bit small, but you need to be careful with the size of your plastic bag. So I'll probably say that's enough, Jake. And the next thing that Jake needs to do is to tie a knot in his bag because obviously we don't want it to come out. I am going to just... No, well, I'm guessing when you tie a knot in the bag, you need to get all the air out. Yes, because what you don't want to do is for the um, bag to burst while you're juggling with it. So it will be contained in your tights. So I've made a slightly smaller one than Jake. I'm tipping it in the corner and then I'm grabbing above it. So it is a bit of a cone shape at the moment, but that gets all the air out. And then once I've grabbed it, I'm going to tie a tight knot as close to the rice as possible, like so. And it doesn't have to be perfect as long as you've squeezed the air out. So you can see now it's, it's nice and squashy. Do you need the help with your knot, Jake? It's too big. <laughs> So that's the danger if you overfill your bag, then it's hard to tie the knot. Yeah, the, the, once you've squeezed the air out of Jake's, there isn't much plastic here for, for knot tying. So I'm going to take a little bit out of Jake's to give us the ability to tie the knot. So Jake's having a bit of a comparison of weight to see what the difference is. It's about 10 grams heavier. So Jake's is 10 grams heavier than mine. So once we have tied the knot, then we're going to just snip as close as we can to the knot. We don't need the leftover bits of plastic. And this is where your pair of tights comes in. So I'm going to grab a pair of tights. I'll give Jake a pair of tights. And you're going to get your hand right down to the bottom of the leg, like so. And that just makes it easy to put your bag of rice inside. Oh, this feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jake's put his bag straight in, so that's OK, too. You can do that. I'm going to pull mine inside out. We've got James here from Worcestershire who said he can ride a giraffe unicycle. Oh, that's amazing, James. Wow, that's brilliant. We know a few unicyclists. Uh, I haven't managed to master the skill yet. So the first wait, Jake. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do here, what I did with this one, I only put one layer of tights on. 
um, and I tied the knot and I cut it off just like we did with the plastic bag. It crinkles a lot because of the plastic inside and you can really just feel the contours of the plastic bag. So it's quite nice to put a couple of layers of tights on. So all I've done here is put a twist in my tights. I'm going to put my hand back in the leg again so that I can turn the tights inside out. And that gives me an extra layer of tight on my juggling ball and just makes them a bit softer to the touch. You can manage that, Jake? No. <laughs> yes. So I'm now going to, at this point, snip off the leg of my tight and tie a knot in the end. Again, I'm trying to tie as close as possible to the juggling ball and to the rice. And then again, once the knot's in, we can snip. And there you have your juggling ball. And that's perfect now for juggling with. And hopefully Jake's with us on this one. Excellent. So now at this point, you can make your sock pull. These are ones I've made earlier. I've taken knee length socks and I've put our juggling balls inside. So if I just reach inside one, while you're doing that, we've got a high from second Howden Hedgehogs and fifth time of Beavers, and they'll definitely be trying this. Excellent. Lovely to see you. So you'll see in here, I'm, all I've got is a juggling ball in my knee length socks, and I've just shaken it down to the bottom. And I've got a say. question. Have you been to any other scout events before? Well, Jake, you're a scout anyway. You would have been at Mara. I would have. This weekend. And so is Kira. And I'm a scout leader. I'm the only one that isn't in scouting, but I do help out quite often, especially when it comes to circus. Now, if you haven't got a pair of knee length socks to hand, because I know not everybody has, you can take some really thick tights. Um, these are ones I've prepared earlier, but you'll see this is the top of the tight. So you can see where the two legs would be. All I've done is cut the legs off the tights. And these are just thick, stretchy tights, and I've effectively turned them now into knee lead socks. And you just take your juggling ball and drop it in the bottom. This one. Yeah, you can take whichever one you want, Jake, and drop it in the bottom. And now you have your sock poi. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move to a poi demonstration. I'm going to call Kira in to help us. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about um, how we use the poi and some tricks you can learn. Uh, if any of you are struggling to make your juggling balls or your poi, do pop the questions in the Q&A. We're going to move through a poi demonstration now and then a juggling demonstration. Um, and once we've done that, we can come back to the table and I can answer questions and, and help you get your yeah. balls made. And while we're starting ourselves out, we've got a few more hellos. We've got uh, first Hartford Sea Scouts, some of them are watching from Hertfordshire. We've got hi from Fort Morpeth and we've got hi from Martha and Archie from the second wide open St John's. Well, it's absolutely brilliant to see you all here today. I'm going to duck out the way to give Kira plenty of space. So we just need to move a chair. So we've got to do a little bit of a move around because we need space now just to do this, this demonstration. So as you could probably see from looking at the poi earlier, it needs quite a, quite a lot of space. So Kira's checking she has plenty of space. We originally wanted to do this outdoors, so we had all the space in the garden, um, but it's not been possible because of the wind today. So the first thing, as we're in the STEM tent, I thought it would be useful to teach you a little bit about the physics of poi. So a poi works on the principle of being a pendulum, so it can swing from side to side in kind of a circular motion. And that's what a pendulum does. You might see that on clocks. Um, if you see the inside workings of some, some old clocks. Um, and then to get the poi moving round in a circle, Kira's going to apply some pressure, which gets it moving in a circle. And the ball is trying to throw itself out of that circle all the time. And that force that Kira is applying with her hand gives it centripetal force, and that forces the ball to stay in the circle. 
while it wants to move off on its own. So if any of you been on any of the fun fair rides where you stand up and you're thrown out to the outside of um, the ride, this is what's happening to the ball as it's moving around the circle. It's feeling centrifugal force and it's trying to push away from where Kira's trying to make it go. So Kira's now going to show us um, a trick known as a stall. And this shows us how the centrifugal force works on the poi because the poi, when Kira stops um, giving it that centripetal force, the ball tries to go off in a straight line. So she'll show you that again. And the trick being a poi artist is to understand how that ball stops. So as Kira's arm stops spinning in a circle and the, pen and the pendulum takes over and the ball moves in a straight line, gravity is then trying to move the ball downwards towards the floor. And the skill of the poi artist is to get the, the poi ball to stop and come in the opposite direction before the audience notice the effect of gravity. So that's our physics relating to how poi works. The other thing to bear in mind when you're learning poi as a beginner is that, especially with our contact poi, they're quite heavy. And depending how heavy you made your juggling balls, they can hurt you if you hit yourself. And it's quite common as a beginner to hit yourself as you work out how to control the poi. So go slowly, take your time um, and make sure, as we said before, you're working in plenty of space. So we're going to start by showing you um, the real beginner basics so you can get moving hopefully in time with us with your poi. So we're going to start, Kim's going to start by rotating the poi just in front of her face. And this is known as the wall plane. So if you stood up next to a wall, you should be able to rotate your poi in a circle. So it just follows the shape of the wall. So going in a vertical circle. And this is our wall plane. And Kira's showing you now from the side. And once you've got a hang of using the poi in one hand, you can switch it to the other hand. And once you've got the hang of that, then you can add in your second poi. And things can get tricky with the second poi because you've got to focus then on having both balls moving in that wall plane, trying to stay in that vertical circle whilst moving around together. And you can see Kira's got them going in the same direction and she can switch direction. And the poi can also come in together. And you've got to take care here that the balls don't hit each other because they're going at the same time. And then they can go the, way, the other way and go outwards. So that's your initial beginner drills in wall plane. So Kira's now going to show you wheel plane. And wheel plane is at 90 degrees to the wall plane. And here we're imagining we're an old fashioned steam train and our arms are going round like with the wheels on the train. And again, Kira is going to show you from the side what it looks like. And you can see here again, the balls are moving in the same time as each other. So now we can talk about timing of poi. So we saw the ball, balls moving at the same time. Kira is now going to show you something called split time. And this is where the balls move at 180 degrees to each other. And this is how we can get some of our nice variations in terms of how the balls can move at different angles, different speeds, forwards and backwards. So once we've managed to get a hang of our balls moving in the two planes, wall and wheel plane, we can then have a look at a trick called butterfly. So this is our balls moving together in the same time. But instead of being outside each other, like we showed earlier, Kira's bringing her arms together and crossing to form the wings of a butterfly. And this is really the, one of the first basic beginner tricks. While we're there, we've got the first bikers um, looking at trying this at the first bikers circus camp. Excellent. A circus um, camp sounds yeah, really we've exciting. We've got Riley and Ansel from the 17th. They're really enjoying it and are going to watch tonight. 
Hi, Rami and Ansel. So Kira is now going to um, just show you a little bit of inspiration. The trick now is she's going to show you some of her favorite tricks. And what I'd like you to do is watch these closely. And if you can tune in tonight, see which tricks you can see later. So this is a trick called thread the needle. And this is the reverse of that, the reverse thread the needle. This is a weave. And a reverse weave. And a reverse weave. And a windmill. And this trick is based on a very famous picture called the Petruvian Man. Because Kira is using poi, we call it the Poitruvian Man. This is Poitruvian Man, and this is my variation known as Poitruvian Woman, which I created by adding two extra spins in front as I go around. Thank you, Kira. Great demonstration. So Kira's going to leave us now because she actually has her own Explorer workshop to go to. So thank you, Kira. We will be seeing lots more of Kira tonight at nine o'clock with those amazing boy skills. So while we get ready for the next bit, we've got Seb from First Pontiel and Scouts in Northumberland really enjoying the session. Thank you, Seb. So I'm now going to ask Jake to come and join us. So Jake is going to do our juggling demonstration for us. And I'll just come and join him. So the first thing Jake's going to do is take one ball. We're going to show some skills first, Jake. So we're going to take one ball. When it comes to juggling, what you need to do is learn how to throw and catch from each hand really consistently. We're trying to throw the ball in an upside down U. So this is our stem bit of our juggling demonstration. This is called Imasa Parabola. This is the type of shape that we're trying to make with our ball. So whilst you try and get your uh, throws really even, it can take quite a while, especially throwing in from the left hand. Um, you can see we've practiced a while. So you just have to have patience. Um, I used to practice this in front of the television because it kept me entertained whilst trying to get my wrists nice and strong and my hands coordinated. Once you can do one ball really confidently, then we'll move on to two. So what we're trying to do with two balls is we're trying to again throw in that parabola upside down U shape. You throw your first ball until it's three quarters of the way, it's just starting to come down from the peak and then you throw your second ball. And as you can see Jake doing, this allows you to catch one ball, then the other, one ball, then the other. And this allows you to start adding two balls together to build into a three ball cascade. Now at this point, I'm going to let you see Jake do a trick that he has taught himself with two balls, which is to keep the two of them going. This is not a trick I particularly practice, which is why I'm letting Jake demonstrate it. And that's just launching the ball as soon as you catch it without a gap in. That's great, Jake. Thank you. We've got a hello from Jacob Whitley Bear Fifth. Hi, Jacob. Nice to see you. So the reason why I'm doing it slowly and why we were doing it slowly before is this is the timing for a three ball cascade. So Jake's got his third ball, so we'll let him carry on and what we're doing here is if you can compare my pattern with Jake's pattern you'll see that when I stop that's the point the third ball comes into the pattern and again all three balls are doing the same thing they're going up and stop and as they're coming down off the peak we're launching another ball and that get is how you get the three balls in if you can't get to the three balls and you struggle you can stick with the two balls and you can add a clap. And as you can see, it's not easy to do that either, especially when you're not practicing those drills for a while. And if you throw higher, you give yourself more time. And that gives you more time to catch the balls. And that should get you into a three ball cascade. Now, if you're struggling with three balls and you want to stick at two, 
there's quite a few tricks you can do with two balls. So the basic one is throwing two balls with one hand. And depending on how good you are, there's lots of different variations of that. So this one is drawing a circle from front to back. It's not so easy as you can see. Then I can switch and I can draw a circle from inside to outside. And the balls are sometimes very tricky. And this one is drawing a circle from outside to inside. Well done, Jake. Now, the last one of the two ball varieties is called columns, where we're trying to keep the balls separate, going up and down in separate columns. So they're not drawing circles and following each other. They're doing their own thing. We've got so, Carl from Whitley Bay 21st says hi as well. Hi, nice to see you. So I'm going to hand over to Jake now and he's going to give you a bit of inspiration from his juggling practice. And what trick are you doing now, Jake? Tennis. So tennis is where one ball is going over the top. Jake's going to do it with three different coloured balls. Let's see if you can do it with the red one. You'll see the red one goes from side to side over the top of the two green ones. Like a tennis match. This is a reverse cascade. So this is like our three ball cascade we were just teaching you, but we're throwing the balls here from the outside rather than the inside. And Jake's probably been juggling about six months, yeah. maybe a year. So you can see how long it takes in terms of getting good practice and building new skills. Any more tricks you want to show us? Oh, the underarm trick. So here Jake's throwing his one of the balls under his arm. And this is a, a starting trick to help you build to a trick called a windmill. I'll try. And Jake will try a windmill. Let's see how he goes. That's a good windmill. Well done, Jake. So I'm going to jump in now and I'll show you what I'm working on. Windmill is probably the hardest thing Jake's working on at the moment. From the windmill, we can move into a trick called a mill's mess. And this has taken me about 18 months of solid practice to learn. So we start with the windmill and the mill's mess is a windmill in two directions. So you will see, hopefully, that the balls are going around from side to side. It's quite a tricky trick. I'll give it another go. There we go, not bad. And the last trick I wanted to show you, I've only learned this in the last three weeks in our lockdown online juggling club. And this is called a robot. So let's see how well I do at this one. And it's supposed to be like a robotic claw grabbing, ooh, robotic claw grabbing the balls and moving them. There we go. So. That's the end of our demonstrations. We hope we've given you some great inspiration for juggling and for poi. Well, before um, we finish, we have a few messages though. That's so great. We've got hi um, from Ava, second wide open Cubs. Nice we've to got, see you, Abe. Someone's excited for 9 p.m. And Seb says it's the best session yet. Yay, we love to hear that. So before we finish off for the afternoon, does anybody need any more help? with their balls or have any questions on how to do the making? Last chance to ask some questions. No, I think. No, we're quite on the chat. That's excellent. Well, in which case, we'd just like to thank you for watching. We're really excited to show you our skills this evening at nine o'clock. So please do join in, though I know there'll be a replay later. And uh, goodbye from Circus Family Edwards.